So we're excited to get to spend some time with you in the Word tonight. Have a great study still in the book of Ephesians. Uh, powerful, powerful, powerful book. Amen. Writings from the Apostle Paul. And so we're excited to get to spend some time and to, to break down the scriptures and the Word of God to, uh, through revelation through the Holy Spirit. And I hope it'll be a blessing and encouragement to you. We're just giving a little time, let folks get connected in and get joined in. It's our eight o'clock Tuesday night walking through the word. Amen. Sister Angela Dunstan, good to see you. Josie, good to see you, sis. Appreciate you girls and sisters for joining in with us tonight. We're just again, uh, hope everyone's had a wonderful day, but stony night. Good to see you, bro. Appreciate you too, brother. Thanks for joining as well. So I hope everyone had a beautiful day. Great day, man. It was, man, it was so awesome. Uh, beautiful weather today here in, uh, Wagram, North Carolina, where I live. <clears throat> I was in Rockingham most of the day, uh, spending some time with some pastors about, um, getting in together and working together for the gathering in March. Amen. It's going to be a great time in the Lord. Amen. I listen. I hope you're involved and I hope you're, if you're not, it's not too late. You can still join our team. We need your help. Amen. And we got some folks that's joined in with us and, uh, we're going to just touch Rockingham with the power of the spirit of Christ. Sister Heather, good to see you, sister. Thanks for joining with us live tonight as well. So everything's coming together for the gathering, uh, tomorrow night, uh, for the, intercessory team and auto ministry. Uh, Sister Megan, good to see you. We're having our first training class tomorrow night at uh, 7, I think it is. Sister Tammy, miss you. Good to see you, sister. Thanks for joining with us as well. So uh, praise God that things are just kind of moving along. And again, we spent some time. We had uh, met with about nine pastors today, spent some time together with them and uh, praying and just believing God for a great move of the Holy Spirit in March. Amen. In the gathering. Amen. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great time together. So again, hope everyone's been blessed, been encouraged. Amen. Believe, uh, put your faith in action. Amen. Don't just believe in the Lord, but have faith in the Lord. Trust the Lord. Amen. Cast yourself and your belief systems upon him. For the Lord will never fail you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll be with you even to the ends of the earth. Amen. Man may, man will let you down, but Christ will never let you down. His word is true, settled in heaven. Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away before one jot or one tittle of his word will fail. He's the Lord. So the word of God is sure foundation, a solid rock. Amen. Cause it's found that Christ is the word. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The written word and the living word. Praise God. He's the logos of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, he's the Rima of God. God manifests in his word through Christ. They, anyway, in the beginning was the word, and word was God, and the word was with God. Amen. So in the mind of God, Christ was there. Amen. In the plans of God, Christ was there from the beginning. Christ was slain for the foundations of the earth. Amen. So before we had God on his, on our mind, God had us on his mind. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're excited about what Christ is doing and empowering his people for such a time as this, uh, to prepare ourselves for spiritual battle and warfare. Amen. To engage and that lives can be touched and changed. Amen. So it's good to have you with us tonight. Thanks for joining with us. Please share and like if you will. Uh, appreciate that very much. If you would do that, help us get the word out. So we're back in the book of Ephesians chapter one. We read last week, uh, uh, verses 15, 16, and 17, where we started on part of 17. We'll get back in on verse 17 tonight. Hopefully we'll finish verse 18. So 15 through 18, these verses are categorized or entitled the knowledge of God, knowing God. Amen. Should be our first priority. Not knowing of God, but knowing God. The only way to really know him is having a personal relationship through Jesus Christ. He reveals through revelation who he is to our spirit. For our spirit bears witness, for the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. It is that revelation, is that work of spiritual connection and spiritual relationship 
that we are now becoming the family or the children of God, the body of Christ. Amen. So it's not just good enough to know about God. We must have the knowledge of God. We must know him. Amen. Uh, and so that's what Paul was teaching us in verses 15 through 18. He gives us some powerful steps in verse 6, 15 and 16 about how he had prayed over them and believed their faith and saw their love and for the saints. And he, he encouraged them and he was covering them with prayer as a senior leader and an apostle. Paul was praying over the church in Ephesus and encouraging them. And verse 17 is where we'll start tonight. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that the Father of glory, we discussed that, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. We, di we dived in last week on wisdom and what wisdom was. Amen. The understanding of basically the un uh, wisdom can be best understood by the single words, what and how. Amen. What is this? And then how does this function or how does it apply to me? That's what wisdom is. How do I take now what I know, what is a what, and apply it, amen, in life, uh, in knowledge, in spirit, in heart? How now can I use knowledge and truth? So we talked about that last week. Tonight, we want to jump into the sec the, the three things that he gives us here tells us about in verse 17 that the father may give unto us the spirit of wisdom number one two is revelation in the knowledge of him so we're going to embark and study a little bit more about the spirit of revelation the phrase or the the, the used here is the spirit of revelation is the holy spirit who reveals god to the believer this is abundantly clear in scripture and i gave you first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 through 12 last week. The believer is indwelled by the Holy Spirit. Every person that is born again and accept Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit takes his abode in their life. He that has not the Spirit of uh, the Holy Spirit is not has has not Christ. In other words, they have not been saved. For the for every believer that is truly born again, uh, the Holy Spirit takes his abode or comes and takes its residence within the believer, not just around them or moving uh, on them, but in them. Amen. Major difference between the Old Testament and New Testament for the coming of Christ. So the word revelation basically means to manifest, to reveal, to un unveil, or uncover, or to open. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to reveal the knowledge of God to Christians. In other words, so the spirit of revelation through the Holy Spirit is the, it's spiritual. Spiritual wisdom, spiritual revelation, and spiritual knowledge. It is not carnality. It's not, it's not men, mental intellect. It's not man's, uh, intuition or, or, or man or, or humanity's, um, uh, smarts or what well, like senses. You know, it's spiritual. So it, it works through the spirit or spiritual realm in the supernatural. So, Spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation, which means to make manifest. In other words, to make known, to uncover, to reveal, uh, to open up, which is the work of the Holy Spirit to reveal the knowledge of God, the knowing of God, to know God, amen, uh, as a Christian. In fact, it is the work of the Holy Spirit that reveals the meaning of all truth to Christians. In other words, about Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit come, he, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Amen. So it is a work of the Holy Spirit to reveal truth, which truth is the knowledge of God. This is clearly seen in First Corinthians chapter one, verses nine through sixteen, where the wisdom of the world is a contrast or contrary with the wisdom of God. It's contrast. A spiritual Christian sees through the spiritual revealing to him. In other words, so as a Christian, we uh, see things through spiritual revelation. Uh, uh, unveiling, uh, uncovering. <clears throat> so it is not natural. It is not through man's wisdom, man's ability, the meaning behind the world events as well as day-to-day -day experiences. We as Christians should understand who and what is behind the events of history and human experience. Therefore, he gains a growing knowledge of God day by day. It is a work of the Holy Spirit to bring us to the place 
and uh, to come to, that, that the Holy Spirit can work through us and bring to us a spirit of revelation, a making known, an uncovering. Amen. On a day to day basis, as we grow, as we walk, as we mature as a believer to get to know Christ more and more and to know God more and more through knowledge, through revelation. Now, the power of revelation is so, so important, especially upon us as believers, because it's the work of the Holy Spirit. It is also attached to the church. First mention of the church, we talked to you about this before, Matthew, uh, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, Peter, but my Father which is in heaven. It's the spirit of revelation. He says, my Father which is in heaven has revealed this unto you, Peter. Amen? Not flesh and blood. So spiritual revelation or making known of who God is has to be done through spiritual revelation, through the Holy Spirit, and not through the intellect of man. Amen? I ain't seeing no hearts, but I hope you're still on and you're listening and you're watching this. Amen? Hallelujah. So here's a couple thoughts that we want to think about as we think about now spiritual revelation. So Paul steps us in verses 17 from wisdom to revelation to knowledge. Praise the Lord. Uh, so if a believer is to grow in his knowledge of God, the richness and the deep things of God must be open unto the believer. In other words, the Holy, the Holy Spirit must reveal to us the meaning and knowledge or truths of God's word, for example. You, if you just read the Bible without spiritual revelation or a unveiling or understanding, you would never truly understand because it is not just natural words on paper. It is alive. It's the spirit of Christ. The word of the word of God is Christ. Amen. It's alive. It's active. It's moving. It's it's uh, the word of God imparts life. Amen. Hallelujah. The power of the word and through the work of the Holy Spirit. So God has deep rich things, rich things in store for your life. They've been covered. In other words, when Paul begins to introduce to us, the, the, for example, some of Paul's teachings about the depths of the mysteries of the church. For the Jews had it in their mind and understanding that Christ come to set up his kingdom for just the Jews. But it was God's, always God's intent that the Jews, Gentiles, and for whomsoever will let him come. But it had not yet been truly revealed until the coming of Christ. In other words, and so it was God's intent and Paul said it was a mystery. In other words, it was something that was had been hidden, but now God is bringing it to light. Amen. It's just like it's kind of like finding a, 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 a diamond in 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 a, a in a in a field or a rock. It may be been there for hundreds of hundreds of years, but if you don't know it, you can walk by it every day, and you never know the worth wealth that is right there with you, right around you, until it is revealed by many different methods. So spiritual revelation only comes through the Holy Spirit. It's not accident. It is not stumbling over it. Amen. The Holy Spirit must make known or reveal. And that can be tied to God's timing. When the fullness of time, time come, Christ was revealed. In other words, Christ came, born of a woman. In other words, there is timing with God because God has set things on timing. Many people, even in Jesus' time, they ask Jesus, when would the end of the day be? Sandy Thompson, good to see you, sister from Virginia. Good to have you on. So so many has asked, uh, even asked Jesus in his time, when would the end be? Jesus said, uh, I, I, have not, I don't have that time. Only the Father has reserved that in his own. In other words, only God knows when the end of days will be, when the end of time shall be. In other words, it's not yet been revealed. In other words, he knows it, but we don't know it because why? He hasn't revealed it. So this is important. If you are to know God and to understand day-to-day -day affairs of your life and what God is doing in society, in this world, you must understand it through spiritual revelation. It is not through intellectual of man. So quit letting people try to dictate to you and tell you the future of your life when the word of God does not support it. Amen. Believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. But it, it has to come. The deep things of God must be open to us as believers. But the things of God are, are, are everything else that is worthwhile. 
They are handed over to men on a silver platter. Man must seek to learn more and more about God. In other words, the deep things of God's not just going to be there, not going to be handed out. You're going to have to seek for it. You're going to have to have a passion and a pursuit to know him. Amen. I want to know you, God. I want to know you. Moses said, I want to see you, God. And God says, Moses, don't you know no man has seen me? You got, no man can look upon me and live. Amen. And, 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 but, but God, because God considered Moses a friend of God, God says, I'll hide you in the cleft of the mountain. You go up and get, get in position. I'll hide you. Uh, when you, when I pass by, you'll be able to see the hindquarters of my glory. But you cannot look upon me because man cannot look upon the glory, the, the, the majesty of God through, hu through humanity. It would just consume us by the, by the power of his light and the power of his strength. Amen. And so what God did was hide Moses by, and just let Moses see a glimpse and it affected his body physically. His skin began to glow. It was just such a glow that when he went down off the mountain, the people were afraid of him. He had to put a sack over his head. Amen. Because he had been exposed to the glory of God. See, see, God wants you to know him and experience all the things that God has for your life. But he's not going to just hand it over to you. It's not going to be just handed to you in a silver platter. Why is that? It's not that God don't want you to know. And it's not that God's playing tricks on you, hide and go seek or nothing. It is really tied to the point of if, if, if it is just handed out there to you, then you've not went through maturity and process now to live at that next level. Amen. It is through trials and ups and downs and maturities and mistakes and growing, uh, inwardly and outwardly that moves us and gets us in the position. Amen. That our faith is strong enough. Our maturity and our character is in place for the deep things of God. It is in that pursuit, that, praise God, that, that prepares us for when God reveals that next level or that next deep thing for our life. In many cases, it's who we are. In many cases, our calling. In many cases, who, should, who you should be connected with and not connected to. Uh, uh, many places of making life decisions for you. God wants to reveal himself to you, but it, you have to seek it. You have to, to move toward the things of God. And that's what Paul was trying to talk about, about because see, many Christians do not have or seek spiritual revelation. Amen. They read a scripture and say, I got it. I got it. I got it. No, you, you just scratched the surface. Can, can you, can you, uh, as a person, have you ever read a scripture in the Bible? And it, and it just, uh, you know, you say, okay, I got John 3.16, for example. God so loved the world, gave his only God son. Okay, I got that. God loves me, right? And he loves me this much. He was willing to give his son to die for me. Praise the Lord. That's deep. That's powerful. Amen. But when the Holy Spirit gives you a, a new, fresh, uh, hidden understanding of deep, deeper than that, Amen. Then that scripture takes on a whole nother meaning, a whole nother understanding. Praise God. A whole nother knowing. Are y'all with me? Amen. And it is out of your knowing that you live your life. It's out of, you know, I heard a preacher say it like this. You know, you, you just have a, you have a, you just know it in your knower. It's just down in you. It's in your spirit. Amen. When you know the things of God, you know the faithfulness of God, you know the love of God. You know the power of God. You know the forgiveness of God. You know who he is by his actions and his nature, his attributes. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is continually revealing more. How many of you know we've only scratched the surface of who he really is? Amen. Uh, I think it takes a lifetime of pursuit of continually getting more revelation and more knowledge of who he is. Hallelujah. When I first got saved, I knew him as a savior. Praise the Lord. But then when I got sick, I experienced, even though the word told me, but that he, that, uh, by his stripes, I'm healed. When I experienced my, my, when I experienced his healing, now I have a different perspective of knowing why I have personal connection to it. In other words, it's alive now in me that I was sick and miraculously the power of the Holy Spirit by his stripes, he healed my body. 
I felt the release. I felt the, the, the power of God when it moved upon my body and he healed my sickness and he raised us up. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, but, but so, so no one could ever take that away from me. It doesn't matter to me if a person tells me God don't heal. I don't believe in healing. It don't make me no difference what they believe. I know in my knowing, I know in my experience, I know in my spirit because I was sick and he healed me. You know what that is? It is the scripture. It is God now uh, through the spirit, through the Holy Spirit, bringing a spirit of revelation. He's unfolding, unveiling, amen, his power of healing and restoration. Even in my deliverance, praise God, it was God that delivered me. Praise the Lord and set me free. It doesn't matter. People say, well, you need to go through this. You need not know. I went to the cross, amen, and he revealed to me. Amen. By the power of God to break off that yoke of bondage off of my life and set me free. Been free for many, many years now from drugs and alcohol. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and by faith, we continue to walk and we continue to live in that freedom of Christ Jesus. This is what I'm talking about. This is, see, it is deeper things that God has in store for your life, but it it, it, you can only know it through spiritual revelation. Hey, Joanne Gillis, good to see you jumping on, sister. Good to have you. In other words, so man must seek to learn more and more about God. He must seek to have the truth of God revealed to him. Amen. See, God wants to show himself mighty in our life. He wants to get us to get to know who he is. Cause, cause see, once you get a knowing, I know that I know that I know, you're not easily persuaded. See, there's many Christians. They're, they're easily tossed about with the winds. And the Bible says like a leaf blown from here and there. Amen. Why? Because they're not settled in assurance that I know that I know that I know. Amen. It's a stability in our faith that when we know it in us, in our spirit, and it's been revealed to us, and we have now the knowledge of God in a particular area in our life, the enemy, the enemy doesn't have any area to pull me away from that. He doesn't have any area to tell me that God can't heal me. Amen. Or God won't heal me because I've already experienced that in the truths of God's word and personally. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so that's what Paul was trying to get us to see and to grasp. See, many points to human philosophy and says, know yourself. That's a good thing. Get to know yourself. There's nothing wrong. You should know about yourself. You should know your weakness, your strengths. You should know how you apply things and how you understand things. You should have a knowledge of yourself, but that should not be your, your most important thing. Knowing Christ and, and his life eternal that, that you might know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom have, whom he has sent. In other words, the real depth of knowledge is not just knowing yourself, but knowing him. To know oneself is important, but very important is the greatest thing in all the world is to know God personally. To know him, that is one, that one shall live with God forever. Do you know you have eternal life that you'll live with the Lord forever and ever and ever? Do you know that in your knowing? Hallelujah. That's the reason why the Bible tells us don't fear death. Hallelujah. Why? Because death is just a transformation for us. It's not an end. It's a beginning as a believer. Why? Because we have eternal life with Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Through Christ's sacrifice. God is a, uh, God in eternal life are the uh, summons of knowledge. It is better to know that one shall never die than to know all there is about oneself and lose the knowledge all of death. So, so the spirit of revelation is so, so powerful and important. And then the next, the third thing that Paul talks about here is the, is the knowledge of him. Praise God. Uh, the thief, uh, the third thing is to grow in the knowledge of God. A believer must have the, the eyes of their heart enlightened. In other words, now for us to have in verses 18, Paul says, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, which is tied down to God revealing knowledge to us through the Holy Spirit that ye may know what it is, the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of in it, of his inheritance in the saints. I'm going to read that verse to you again. Verse 18 is a powerful. It talks about through an enlightened heart. In other words, the eyes of your understanding. 
So he moves from now knowing, having a knowing of God to an understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, 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 and I will break this down for you. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. In other words, darkness is gone and now uh, a light has came on. And now I'm enlightened. I have, I have now understanding. Praise the Lord. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. There's many and many and many of Christians that is walking in confusion, a confusion about doctrinal issues and spiritual understanding. There's many in my experience of being a pastor and a leader for many, many years and dealt with ministering people for many years. I, I, I often and most times will find many Christians have no idea what they're calling. They have, they really have no idea what their destiny and purpose is. Or what it's about. Uh, they're just going to church and they're, 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 they love the Lord. They're saved, but they have, not, they have not pursued and have let, they had their, their eyes of their heart enlightened and opened. Amen. To, to, to have understanding. Praise God. Get, the Bible says, get understanding. Praise God. So let's talk about, let's talk about this. So. The knowledge of God, a believer must be, uh, must have the eyes of his heart enlightened. Amen. This is a beautiful description of the heart, the eyes of the heart. The heart must be open so that the light of God can be seen and grasped. An open heart is the responsibility of both the believer and the Holy Spirit. Now I want to make sure you catch this. So, so the, the song that, the, the, that we've heard sung many, many times, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes. Other words, Open my, my, my part of my heart. Let my heart be enlightened. Now, the opening of my heart, the opening of my spirit, the opening of my life to the things of God is in my control and in your control. The Holy Spirit, amen, will do the enlighten, bringing the spirit of revelation, bringing the knowledge. But if we don't do our part, then we will never have true understanding. If, if our heart or our spirit is not enlightened and open to the light of God, to the knowing of God, to the understanding of the things of God. I mean, how many, how many seeks, God, I just want to know you. See, many people go in prayer for wanting stuff and needing things. And we all have things that we need. We have things that we're dealing with. We do. Amen. But, but we should go to the Lord seeking to have understanding. Amen. That I may that I may walk in your will, Lord, that I might know your nature and your heart. Amen. I want to understand. Cause see, when I have an understanding, I know, I know what to do with it. I, I can, I can begin to, to, to settle my thinking and my spirit. Amen. And can find contentment and satisfaction in the things of God. See, many are being lured by the enemy away from the things of God because they have, they have no contentment. They have no, they have no settleness that, Amen. I, I understand now. I, I see myself. I have my heart is open to you, Lord. Shine your light of your glory upon my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I making sense to you? I hope you really, really can catch this. So we have a responsibility as a believer, and then the Holy Spirit has uh, His work that He will do. But you got to know the Holy Spirit never will go against what you will allow. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He only knocks. Amen. He's not going to tear your heart open. He's not going to break you, make you open yourself to the light of the, of the things of God. He will only deal with us. He will, he is there to make things understanding or enlightened that the glory of God may fill our hearts and our spirits. Amen. The believer must open his heart and focus his affections and intellects and will upon knowing God. That is your priority. That is what, that is mine and your responsibility as a believer. Watch this. A believer must open his heart and focus his affections, compassion, desire, a burning yearning for the things of God and who God is. Amen. A passion. Man, I'm telling you, many, many, many has lost their desire, their passion. Amen. To know him. And to, and to have the things of God. And then affections and intellect. In other words, a, a, a knowing in their minds and their understanding. And, and the will upon knowing God. Amen. 
the will speaks to legitimacy of submission. See, you got to, when you understand submission and you understand your will and the will of God, my will, if I go again, go with what I feel and what I want in the natural man will always be contrary to the things of God. For the flesh does not desire the things of God. Are y'all with me? But here's the key, here's the key important thing. Every person God has created you as a moral agent. In other words, you have your own will. You decide what you, uh, what you believe, what you accept. Hallelujah. God's not going to ever, uh, override your will and make you do anything. Amen. Hallelujah. God says, I give you a choice and now you choose. So, so I must, so when I understand submission, it is this. It is I choose to, to surrender my will for his will. That's submission. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. A amen. And not just, not just do it, but do it in heart and in spirit. In other words, not my, Jesus said this in the garden. Remember this? I, I preached about this, uh, some time back about the sleeping church. Not my will. Jesus prayed, prayed this when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, warring in the spirit against Satan. Amen. And, and, uh, he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. In other words, let this, is there another way? In other words, uh, my, uh, what, what I have to do, what I've called to do, uh, my, my, my mission. Amen. It is a hard task. In other words, I'm going to do you, I'm going I'm to obey God, but is there another way that this could be done? In other words, let this cup pass from me, cup of suffering, the cup of, the cup of punishment, the cup. Really, he was talking about this. That he knew that he was bearing the sins of humanity. Jesus became sin to take away our sin. That's the reason why on the cross, he says, why hast thou forsaken me? Because the father had to remove himself or to look away from his son because his son was bearing the sins of humanity. Hallelujah. Y'all with me now. And Jesus knew, Jesus knew that, that was going to be a hard thing at no time in eternity had he ever been uh, uh, separated or uh, his father's face had turned from him. It was a hard thing for Jesus then. Jesus said, Lord, Father, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but thy will be done. Even Jesus, amen, had a will. He, in other words, a desire, what he wanted. He submitted and came, amen, took on a form of flesh to fulfill the will of his father. That's told, that's a mission. Amen. Hallelujah. See, many Christians act like God's making them go to church, making them read their Bible, making them pray. Amen. Making them do the things of God. Praise God. No, God ain't making you do anything. It is your decision to submit to the will of God. See, God's got a will for your life and a plan for your life. It is up to you to decide you're going to go your way or you're going to go the ways of God. Now, the way our way is a way to death. But the ways of God and the will of God is that all should come into repentance and be saved. God's got a plan and eternity for your life. God's got a destiny. He created you for a plan, a God plan for your life. Hallelujah. See, God's not playing catch up. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with Stoney. Uh, you know, but, uh, so, so he, he, Stoney came to, came and got saved. So I gotta, I gotta figure out what I'm going to do with Stoney. No, no. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, he knew you. He ordained you. He called you. He said destiny upon your life. Woo. But God says, I give you a choice. It's your will. Amen. You choose. Amen. Because true love has to come through a desire to submit, to put others before yourself. Hallelujah. That's what true love is. True love is submission. It, you know, me and my wife's been married going on 46 years. It's June to be 46 years. I mean, we had to submit our will to, to, to what is best for us as a couple, as a family. What's what, not my will, not what I want to do. I can't, you know, there's no one in a marriage or in a, in a relationship that it can be just what you want to be and do and just the way you want it all the time. That can, it will never work and it will never be healthy and it will never be successful. 
Amen. You, so is it in your spiritual relationship with Christ. You cannot just do what you want to do. You can't live any way you want to live and speak any way you want to say. It's not my will, but thy will be done. Are, are y'all with me? So this is a work of the Holy Spirit through opening my heart in the light of God and the glory of God. I must, and my responsibility is I must accept my, uh, my affections on the things of God. I must put my mind and intellect apart towards the call and the things of God in my life. Amen. And the work of the Holy Spirit. Number two, the believer must seek the Holy Spirit to enlighten and flood his heart with the things of God. We must open our hearts, open our spirit to the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, let the Holy Spirit have his way because the Holy Spirit will only show or manifest Christ. Hallelujah. If it's a spirit, if a spirit comes to you or something comes upon you and it's contrary to the nature of Christ or the word of God, it is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will never tell you to sin. The Holy Spirit will never tell you to do ungodly things. The Holy Spirit will never cause you or speak to you and lead you to do ungodly things. It will, that, that is, that will never happen. That will never be the Holy Spirit. So again, it's about submission. Am I going to submit to the work of the Holy Spirit in my life and let Him open the heart, my heart and my spirit to be enlightened for the things of God? Am I making sense to you now? I hope you're really catching this. So we must, we must open our hearts of understanding. Ephesians, um, 118 is one that we just read. But here's what 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light, which is a powerful, powerful, powerful scripture. Amen. How many just won't know him? Amen. Sister Heather, there's a lot of them. They just want to know about him, but it ain't a whole, I'm afraid there's, God's, God's raising up some people. God's turning some hearts of some, some real believers that really want to know God and see Christ manifested in the earth. First Peter chapter two, verse nine says, you are a chosen generation. Amen. You are chosen. God's speaking to you and I. He's speaking to this generation. For this season, this time. See, you could have been born, never been born yet, or you could have already been born in the past. But God pointed you and set you for this season and this time. You are a chosen. In other words, picked, hand-picked. God chose this generation. A royal priesthood. Praise the Lord. Royal speaks two different things. It means majesty. It means one of bloodline. Priesthood is one a man of, of one that ministers before the Lord between people and God. In other words, when you think about a priest, a priest is a minister under the Lord. Hallelujah. Not just, and we're not just talking about, there you go, put the whole scripture up, right? Uh, a whole, and then he calls us a holy nation. Amen. A holy nation, a, a whole group, a whole nation, the people of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Who would call you out of the, the darkness into, yeah, there you go. Yeah, we getting there. We getting there. Hallelujah. Uh, a peculiar people. Now, many people use that peculiar people as being strange and act strange and act funny. No, it means treasured people, basically. It means one of, that are precious, one that is peculiar. In other words, it, it, it has great significance and importance to me. Amen. That ye should show forth because you know you are all of this as a believer and you that we have been positioned and called to these particular uh, descriptions of who we are as believers. Then you should show forth the praise of him who had called you out of darkness. He called us. In other words, the voice of God called. Here's a good here's a good illustration of being called. When Lazarus had been dead for four days, wrapped in grave clothes. Amen. Jesus came to the tomb four days later after uh, the Jews believed. The Jewish belief was that a spirit of a person lingered around the tomb or the body for three days waiting for an entrance to come back into the body, which is unfounded and unscriptured. The Bible says the moment you die, your spirit goes back to the Father which sent it. But, but that was the Jewish traditional teachings. Jesus waited to the fourth day to where he could... could uh, the breakdown and what he was about to do, the Jews could not 
uh, debate whether if this was the power and the, the miracle of God through Christ. Amen. And so he comes to the tomb, he says, roll the stone away. He says, Father, his sister says, Lord, it's, it's four days. He's already stinking. Amen. Roll the stone away. So they roll the stone away. And what did Jesus do? He called him by name. Lazarus, come forth. Hallelujah. What did God do? What did Jesus do? He called him. He released the power of a word that that could be attached to a person or to a hearing or to a situation because the power of a spoke word is powerful. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, see, uh, the Bible says there's life and death in your words, in your tongue. Hallelujah. That gives you an indication. Lord have mercy. That gives you an indication how powerful words are. Matter of fact, Isaiah talks about, amen, uh, that his word is so powerful, whatever he, it, when it's spoken and released, it will not come back void. It will accomplish whatever he sent it out to do. In other words, a word released is a word sent. So when he talks about call means there's a call, a voice, a word that is speaking to call you out. Hallelujah. The power of the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Aren't you glad he called you? Praise the name of the Lord. Now, let, let, I want to read, I want to read another scripture here. Hallelujah. Uh, in Proverbs 119 and 130, the entrance of thy words giveth light and it giveth understanding to the simple. In other words, so that's the word of God. Now, as we look at further in verses 18, the results of knowing God are threefold. In other words, the knowing God, the calling with the riches of his glory. And when a believer comes to know the hope of God's calling. Amen. That's what he's talking about here. What is the hope of a believer's call? It is what has already been covered in the great spiritual blessings of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Here they are quickly. Remember, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter one talks about, uh, he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Here are some of the blessings that you should be holy without blame, living before him forever and ever in love. Verses four, that we should experience that it, uh, what it means to be adopted as children of God forever and ever. Verses five and six, Ephesians one, verse five and six that you should experience eternal redemption and forgiveness of sins, verses 7, that we should possess the wisdom and understanding of God, verse 8, amen, that we should live in the per in perfect heaven and earth, there will be no more division, but only peace and unity in Christ Jesus, verses 9 and 10, are y'all with me now, amen, hallelujah, so simply stated, God has called us to stand before him in the name of in, in in the name and right and righteousness of Jesus Christ to stand before him just as Jesus stood before him perfect it is evident that we are not perfect but we are called to perfection and that someday in the day of redemption comes when he calls us and we're all raptured away then we shall be standing in him we shall be like him hallelujah I hope you can catch this so here's here's a uh Here's a verse that I really like in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. For our conversation or citizenship is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile, vile, vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto a glorious body, according to the working wherewith he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. Powerful, powerful scripture. Here's another, because I'm running out of uh, kind of run out of time here. I want to make sure I get get these in. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it had not yet appeared what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, He sh we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. First John chapter three verse two. So so He talks about the hope of His calling of uh, of the calling that God has for you and who he's called you to be. And what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? So let's talk about the inheritance a little bit. Now, it's not talking about our inheritance, it's talking about God's inheritance. We are God's inheritance. The believer comes to know God's inheritance. 
his inheritance in the saints. Believers are themselves the inheritance. That is the heritage, or maybe you know this, maybe understand it a little better, the possession of God. We are the children of God. We are his inheritance. We are his heritage. We have been chosen and called, and we are now his possession. We have been bought with a price by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. When we come to know God, we learn who we are. I'm going to read this. I'm going to make sure you hear this now. When we come to know God, when you get to know who he is, you can cannot help. You can't help. Nothing can stop you from discovering and learning who you are. Hallelujah. Praise God. And one of your greatest things is to know God. Your greatest desire is to know God. And in knowing God and, and, and through who he is, automatically reveals who you are. Because we are his possession. We are the heritage and the inheritance of God. Are y'all y'all staying with me now? Amen. Hallelujah. So we come to know God. We learn who we are. The glorious position God has given us. He not just to just not, not just to know God uh, and to know who we are, but to know the how He's positioned, what God has done and given to us. See, we are the sons and God, sons and daughters of God. He's positioned us in the blessings and the favor of God. We have been created in the likeness and the image of God. He has given us the authority to rule and reign in the earth. We are kings and priests under God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You, listen, we are a rags to riches story. He took a broke down, messed up, Sin infested sinner. Hallelujah. Messed up by sin and his own decisions and all those things. But yet he cleansed us by his blood and set us free. Amen. And made us into kings and priests in the kingdom of God. Good gracious of Allah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when you get to understand the glorious position that he's put you in, See, there, listen, the Holy Spirit abides in your life. The very energy, life force of God is the Holy Spirit, which abides and lives within you and wants to baptize you and fill your life. And you should be. You should seek that. If, it, if that, if you don't, if you're not baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to, to begin to pray and seek it right now. Hallelujah. And what that means is I'm fully controlled now by the power of the Holy Spirit and the mind and the heart of God. For the Holy Spirit knows the very will of God and the mind of God. Are y'all with me? So it, what it does, eliminates, it eliminates a lot of meism. It eliminates a lot of my own decisions. Do what I want to do. Da, 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 da. We submit ourselves. Amen. As children and sons and daughters of God. Amen. Are you giving me? So, so the position God has given us, he has made us his very own possession and heritage. Hallelujah. We are, when God, when people see you and I, we are his representative. We are the ambassadors of Christ. Hallelujah. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe, do you know the word of God says that you are the ambassadors of Christ? If that's you, I need to see a heart. If you believe that totally, I want you to see me a heart right now. You need to make sure that you know that's the word of God. Ain't that the word? The word says we are the ambassadors of Christ. So if we are to represent his kingdom and represent Christ, which you can't represent the kingdom outside of Christ, because, you know, if you're born again, you're in the kingdom of God, right? And the kingdom of God is under the rule of Christ, because all things are under him, made by him and through him, and all things are submitted to him. So the king is Christ, amen, and rules in the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Are y'all with me now? And, and so then... If you are the ambassador of the kingdom of God, of Christ, then why aren't you living like it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are to live like an ambassador. You are to represent. You, 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 our lifestyle should be an example of the kingdom of the Christ, the king that we represent. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, boy, oh, boy. And, my, and I'm not being judgmental. Hallelujah. Let us, amen, rule as he ruled. 
Amen. I, I spoke about this the other Sunday, the, the authority of the believer. See, Jesus never begged the devil to do anything. You do not. You are the sons and daughters of God. The authority of God through Christ, amen, has already been given to you. Hallelujah. You have to, you have to accept it and apply it in faith. Hallelujah. See, the, the spiritual warfare that is going on between God, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God is about authority. Amen. I'm going to be teaching a class. Matter of fact, I got one class left on Thursday night. Amen. On the power of the seed, which will be this week. Next week, I'm going to start and embark on a study. I don't know how far to go. Don't worry at all. It's going to go to uh, how it's going to go. But I'm going to start on speaking and teaching on understanding authority and submission in the kingdom. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's going to be our subject. I'm going to because until you can never walk in the full power and the authority of the kingdom, if you don't understand the authority and how the authority works through you. See, all authority was given to Christ. We're going to be dealing with this in the next couple of your verses. Amen. Everything. There's no name above the name of Jesus, for example. So if you study the life and the ministry of Jesus and the gospels, Jesus never struggled. He never struggled with casting out devils. He never begged anybody because when the strong man is bound, you can go in and spoil his house. Amen. Amen. And, and, the, and the Satan, amen, has authority in the earth because man delinquished their authority by the fall in the garden. That's the reason why sickness and death and, and, and stuff is raging upon our world today is because men have submitted their authority and submitted to the will of Satan. And so now Satan rules their life. Amen. With, and he come with a purpose to kill, steal, and destroy. So you can never be walk in your God-given authority as a believer without understanding authority and understanding submission. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. See, we think about submission, submit to your pastor, submit to the leader. Now, there's delegated authority, no doubt about it. I understand that, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit. But until you really understand about submission and authority, you can never walk. Because he, listen, <laughs> Jesus com compared understanding authority towards faith. And I ain't got time to get into that. So, But but uh, I, I, I'm going to dive into that for a little while. See, the believer comes and know God's inheritance and inheritance of the saints. Believers are themselves the inheritance. And I talked about that. Believer comes to know and to experience the enormous power of God. In discussing the glorious result, Paul explodes into the discussion of God's power in the next few verses. Amen. In, chap in this chapter, verses 19 and 20. Because see, when you get the spirit of wisdom, in the spirit of revelation and spirit of knowledge and your heart is open in line, amen, and the hope of his calling in your life, it begins to move you into a new revelation and dimension of the power of God. And I'm telling you, amen, for you and I as believers, amen, the enemy is been defeated, but we give him too much, we give him rights over our life. That he does not own. He does not have. Amen. Praise God. Listen. The power clearly is shown in, in what he, that he did for Christ because it is, it, because of its length, it is discussed on a separate subject in the next outline. Uh, Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Ephesians 3.20. See, so so the knowledge of God is so, so important for you. This is what verses 15 and 18 is teaching and trying to get you to understand. You must seek knowledge. You must open your heart and because it wants to enlighten your heart to the truth and the light of God. Amen? Listen, God has something to say. God has a direction for your life. When you understand in the hope of the calling of God in your life. Now, uh, I hope you understand this. This is very important that you make sure that you grasp the heart, the, the hope of your calling. Praise the Lord. Now, hope 
He's talking about a, a, a truth of a surety. When we think about biblical hope, it's not hope as we know in our natural English terms or, or our natural understanding that I, I have a, I hope something happens. There's a chance that it can't. See, the call of God and the calling of God upon your life is not, is not in jeopardy. Hallelujah. It's not, see, only what he's talking about in hope is, he's talking about hoping of the hope of calling God is the endurance forever in the forward of your future. See, God called you then, God's calling you now, and God's calling you in your future. Hallelujah. That's the power of the word. <laughs> if you really want to know the understanding. Because the sun is hanging now, the moon is hanging in its place by the power of a word. It said, let there be light. And the, and that same word has been speaking for millions of years. Ever how many years and time and seconds it's been, that word is still speaking. It's kind of like, let there be light, 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 light. The power of the word has lost none of its power. And because of the authority of the word, amen, whatever it speaks to must obey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are y'all with me tonight? Hallelujah. So next week on Tuesday night, walking through the word, I hope we walk you through some of these biblical truths. And when we get through with a few verses, I hope you have a better understanding. That's our goal. That's our heart. I'm not in a hurry trying to get through chapter after chapter after chapter. Amen. If you want to just do reading the Bible, you go ahead and help yourself. But amen, I read the Bible. Amen. But when I study the Bible, when I get through the verse, I want to have as much understanding about it. Amen. And spiritual enlightenment as I possibly can. That's my goal for you. When we get through with a verse or two, and for example, we spent, what, three weeks on them few verses there? Amen. It's important that you may now, that you may not now have a knowing, an understanding that you can apply the call, you can apply the truths into your life through spiritual wisdom and revelation. Next week's going to be power, the power of God demonstrated in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And it is powerful. I mean, from verses 19 to verse 23, talks about the power of God. Man, I'm telling you, it is so, so impacting and powerful. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your time and helping. I hope I help. Amen. Because that's my heart and my desire. I want to help you along your walk, your way, uh, your way and your growth with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be a blessing to you if I possibly can. Amen. I don't, I always say this. When the Lord calls me home, I want to leave empty. I don't want to leave with nothing in me. I want to give it all away. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I've been, uh, I've been serving the Lord for many years. I'm an old man now. I'm getting there. Amen. And, uh, I've experienced a lot of different things. Amen. And, uh, I, and I hope if I can impart some truth for you and help you along the way, certainly that's my desire and my hope. I want to see your great, I, Brendan, myself's greatest desire is to see you succeed. Amen. That's what it's about for us. For we, God has done so many great, mighty things in our life. Hallelujah. It, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just awesome. Serving the Lord is, is awesome and awesome and awesome. So thank you for your time tonight. I want to pray for you. I want to pray, believe you, believe with you. If you're on our, our team for the, tomorrow night study, you don't want to miss it. Be there at seven o'clock. We'll be getting started at seven o'clock sharp. We'll be teaching and spending some time about prayer, uh, and impacting of prayer. And what God's calling us to through this season as we prepare for the gathering. Amen. So I'm believing it's going to be really, really powerful. So Father, we thank you for your uh, blessings and your strength and grace. We thank you, God, for the many that are joining with us live and the many, the hundreds will watch later. We pray your grace and mercy and strength. We thank you that God let us be responsible. Let us understand. I've got to open my heart. Amen. If I want to, he says, ask and I shall receive, seek and I shall find, knock and it shall be opened. The Lord, tonight we're asking, we're opening our heart to let your light, Holy Spirit, shine the light of truth in our hearts and in our spirits that we may be the people of God to show forth the glory of the Lord in the earth. Hallelujah. Thank you for your blessings and grace. We pray over your people. We ask strength and grace, covering and mercy over their lives. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. We love you. Thank you for spending time with us tonight. It was an honor to get to spend a little time with you and share some biblical truth. Hope it was a blessing for you. Amen. As much as it was for us. God bless you. We love you. 
Amen. If we don't see you before, we'll be back on Thursday night. Amen. God bless you.